Do you believe? Do you believe? They might be back. They might be back. Craig Guard gets some shocking news pregame, and it does not matter because the Badgers are moving on for the first time since 2017. Wisconsin wins multiple games in the Big Ten tournament and does so in not as emphatic fashion as yesterday, but certainly in dramatic fashion. We're here to break it all down with you on the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Good evening. And thank you for starting your weekend with a six pack. The Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. And oh man, if it's not a lot more than six days a week here in the month of March, I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbers. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbers, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. Real quickly, leave it for you. Leave a review. Ooh, five stars, kind comments. Hey, it really helps the show. Things are awesome right now. We're looking up. We got tons of new opportunities, tons of new things coming to the show in the near future. We're, we're going to talk about that a little bit in the mid-section break here. But all the reviews, subscribes, likes, really helping the show. So appreciate you all keeping that up. Wisconsin wins the quarterfinal of the Big Ten tournament over the Northwestern Wildcats. 70-61, to 61, a nine-point victory. One that was contested down to just about the final minute. But Wisconsin was able to pull away late. Wisconsin held on to a lead. And never gave it up. Frankly, there was a point in time Wisconsin went to its prevent offense. Maybe just a little bit too early. Right after the under four minute timeout as Wisconsin led. But Wisconsin was able to hang on and put it away. A dagger three-pointer by John Blackwell to put the Badgers up by 11. And it was over. Wisconsin winning 72-61 to advance to the semifinal of the Big Ten tournament. There was one big bad man in this game that Wisconsin needed to contain. And look, Wisconsin didn't quite contain him. But 29 points by Boo Booey. He had 16 in the first eight minutes. So to hold him off for the remaining, what, four-fifths of the game, did okay. Had 29 the rest of the, or was that 13 the rest of the way? Settling in Wisconsin, getting some stops. Boo Booey shooting seven of 11 on threes, including four of six in the first half, an impressive performance by Northwestern's outstanding point guard, the only consensus first-team All-Big Ten guard in the conference. Boo Booey was outstanding to start this game. He was a real threat, but nobody else for Northwestern really got theirs. Uh, Brooks Barnheiser scored in double digits 13 points, but nobody else above six Barnheiser had a 13-point, 14-rebound performance, but Barnheiser's 13 points came on 3 of 15 shooting, 0 of 5 from 3. Wisconsin was able to bottle up this Northwestern 3-point shooting offense just enough, just enough. Northwestern, of course, shooting 39.4% from 3 on the season. As they said on the telecast, the best three-point shooting team in their respective conference in the country. Northwestern in conference play shooting better from three than any other team in the country is shooting in their respective conference games. Wisconsin holds Northwestern to 34.8%, respectable enough. Wisconsin able to do enough three-point shooting on its own at 45.5% to win it. It's not the blistering pace that Wisconsin put on in the win over Maryland. Wisconsin shot four of 11 from three in the first half, which obviously quite good. It was the second half where they got a couple more on another 11 attempts to really put the game away. And of course, as we mentioned, that three-pointer 
to put Wisconsin up 11 by John Blackwell to really, really salt the game away was huge for Wisconsin to go out and, yes, steamroll a a Maryland team that is maybe hoping for an NIT bid or maybe choosing to decline one. This was a tournament team. This was an NCAA tournament team, one that has the potential to be wearing home whites on the first day of the NCAA tournament. Northwestern firmly in that mushy 8-9 range. They could be an 8 seed wearing home whites on the first day of the NCAA tournament. So for Wisconsin to get a quality win over a good opponent here is building real momentum after a game yesterday that Wisconsin Absolutely rolled over a not great Maryland team, but certainly not one of the worst teams in the country. Nothing close to that. For Wisconsin to replicate a standout performance and stick it to a team that, frankly, matches up pretty well against Wisconsin. Wisconsin, a porous three-point shooting defense. Northwestern, a great three-point shooting team. Wisconsin, not a good three-point shooting team. Northwestern, the weak spot of that defense is three-point shooting. Wisconsin isn't built to take advantage of that. They were able to replicate some of their shooting heroics from the win over Maryland and get that victory. And that's not a guarantee for this Wisconsin team. Wisconsin shot the three incredibly poorly against Purdue. What, five days ago? Oh my gosh, that feels like a million years ago. The other game Wisconsin played against Purdue also didn't shoot the three very great. This Wisconsin team has gone on real cold streaks from three in this season. And Wisconsin didn't have its best defender in this game. Chucky Hepburn was out. Perhaps the most impressive part of this victory. Chucky Hepburn, who in his three seasons in Madison, had never missed a game. Had never even missed a start. Doesn't matter. Wisconsin did not know that he wasn't going to be available for this game until 30 minutes before tip. He was listed as questionable with a lower body injury. Something that I still don't know exactly where it came from, but if you're watching on YouTube, you're seeing me adjust my crooked mic cover because it is a <laughs> giving me a little bit of anxiety. Um, that's youtube.com slash at Scotty six pack, by the way. Wisconsin was out without its best defender, the all Big Ten defender in Chucky Hepburn. Greg Gard had no idea that was going to happen until 30 minutes before tip. So John Blackwell gets the first start of his career. And on back-to-back days, you get interviews from Greg Gard saying he is not a freshman anymore. And Greg Gard has been saying that since, and again, I either said this on the show yesterday or slightly before that, Since December, he's been saying he is playing beyond his years. John Blackwell is an enormous asset to this team. Has a genuine chance to be this team's leading scorer next season because he does everything right. He never takes a bad shot. He is so instinctive knowing when to cut to the basket. He defends his tail off. John Blackwell in this game did not have a great offensive performance. He had three points on one of eight shooting. The only shot was the dagger three. It it was tough, and he had a difficult assignment where he started guarding Boo Booey at the beginning of this game and didn't quite have it. He and Max Klesmich sharing those responsibilities of trying to tie up the big Northwestern big scoring point guard. This was a a little bit of a difficult game for John Blackwell, but Wisconsin is still able to win. He ends up in foul trouble too, ends up fouling out of the game, only plays 24 minutes in a game that he started. But I don't even feel like John Blackwell had a particularly bad game. 
John, John Blackwell goes in, defends hard. There are times where Wisconsin and John Blackwell is also guilty of this is slipping underneath ball screens, leaving someone like Boo Booey open so that he shoots four of six from three to start the game. But that effort is there every possession. Max Klesman, who we sat on the show yesterday, was having a little bit of a down couple of weeks, maybe a month offensively. Three of 11 from the field, all three of those three-point field goals, three of eight from three. 10 points, seven assists, three rebounds, three turnovers. You probably want a little bit better than that. Uh, but a really, really solid Max Klesman game. And there was enough from all of the pieces here where you could have said, all right, Chucky's not playing. Let's all just get healthy. Move on to the NCAA tournament. They came out and got enough from just about everybody on the roster. Obviously, then the other guard who's going to pick up the slack for, uh, for Chucky Hepburn's injury is Kamari McGee. He played 23 minutes in this one. Had four points, two of four from the field, and maybe the play of the game as Northwestern is trying to come back in this one as the game is still tight down the stretch. Kamari McGee running, sprinting down the court in transition, transition, so excited, can barely say words, gets a block. Greg Gard saying, I didn't know he could jump that high. Everyone, everywhere who has ever seen Kamari McGee play say, I didn't know he could jump that high. That effort. This excitement has been missing for so long on the defensive end for this team. The offensive production has been phenomenal at points of the season. And yes, the offensive production was really solid in this game. Shot 45.5% from three on the game. 10 of 22. Shot 46.2% from the field overall. That's fine. Wisconsin was able to lock down when it mattered most and get a few big defensive possessions, even though its best defender was not available. And that raises the ceiling for this team beyond what I thought it was a week ago. I'm buying myself back into a second weekend run. When it's not on the defensive end, the biggest piece of this, just like it was yesterday, was Stephen Crowell. He is the key to this Wisconsin offense. The offense runs so much more efficiently when Stephen Crowell is a genuine threat from three. Stephen Crowell, once again, taking threes, making three of five. Crowell, 19 points, eight of 12 shooting, seven rebounds. Stephen Crowell got up and at him early from three in this one as well. He airballed, I think, his first shot of the game but then had two more, made a pair on his other two attempts in the first half. And this was not an easy game for, for Stephen Crowell. And this is why I come back to the point I was making yesterday and saying again now that Stephen Crowell is the key. Because Northwestern saw that game. Wisconsin played yesterday. Northwestern didn't have to play yesterday. This was Northwestern's first game in the Big Ten tournament. They saw that performance from Stephen Crowell and said, we're going to bring the double. They did. They brought it hard. Stephen Crowell didn't care. 19 points. Made it happen. An impressive, impressive performance. And when Stephen Crowell can drag his defender out to the perimeter, all the other stuff works so well. All of the other back cuts. The zoom actions on the opposite wing. The 
this offense, when you give uh, someone like AJ Store a little bit of daylight, as Greg Gard said in the post-game interview, he's going out and doing a lot of damage. That's what he did in this one, courtesy of Stephen Crowell giving Wisconsin that spacing. We're going to talk about that damage that AJ Stewart did in this one right after we tell you about our friends over at TickPick because TickPick is where I get tickets to any live sporting event that I'm going to. Wisconsin basketball games, Wisconsin football games, football season is going to be back before we know it, folks. Six months. Hockey games, Brewers games, baseball season is back. We got spring training. In, in two weeks, I will be in New York for opening weekend of the Milwaukee Brewers season. Whew. And I'm buying those tickets on TickPick because TickPick is the only place that I can go for no fee tickets. Zero dollars in fees, no service fees, no delivery fees, none of that nonsense. None of it. And I'm always going to get the best deal on TickPick when I buy there with zero dollars in fees. Plus, if you use my link in the podcast description, my link that is on your screen at this very moment, if you are watching on YouTube, use that link, save 10 bucks on your first order on TickPick for no fees. Get the best deal on tickets when you download the TickPick app. That's T-I-C-K-P-I-C-K. Download the TickPick app in the Google Play Store or Apple App Store, T-I-C-K-P-I-C-K for TickPick and use my link in the podcast description. Save 10 bucks on your first order. Coming up this week on the show. Is it, is it even this week at this point? It's all blending together. It's fine. Like I said, Sunday feels like a million years ago. Football season's coming up quickly. I was at Pro Day today for, for the Wisconsin Badgers inside the McLean Center. Uh, we're going to be pumping out a ton of content about that over, over on Badger Notes. So uh, that those pieces might be up already um, by the time you are listening to this. So click, click my link, as always, for my latest piece on Badger Notes that is in the podcast description. Wisconsin women's hockey playing the regional final tomorrow as you're listening to this on Friday. That game is on Saturday afternoon at 2 p.m. Nice, nice, nice little slide between Wisconsin's semifinal game in the Big Ten tournament at 2 p.m. on CBS right into the Elite Eight game of the NCAA Women's College Hockey Tournament at 2 p.m. I said the basketball team plays at 2. They play at noon. Basketball team plays at noon. Wisconsin women's hockey plays at two. Uh, we have a, a preview episode for that matchup as Wisconsin is going to play the St. Lawrence Saints. That episode out just a couple of days ago that is in your podcast feed here. We did it with Noah Clark of 1070 The Game. We'll also have a game preview for that on Badger Notes as well. Maybe up by the time you are listening to this. And then it's Selection Sunday. <sighs> AJ Store. AJ freaking Store. 30 points, 30 points, a career high, a big 10 tournament record for a Wisconsin Badger on 10 of 16 shooting three of five from beyond the arc, seven of eight from the charity stripe, six rebounds, two turnovers. That's all right. That's all right. If you're taking 16 shots, getting up 30 points, I can forgive the two turnovers. And it was a game in which, one, AJ Store's defense showed up. That doesn't happen every game. That was impressive. Knowing that they needed the additional defensive help, given that Chucky Hepburn was going to be absent from this one. That was big. I, I thought everybody on Wisconsin's team, their, their hands were really active early, try, trying to break up passes, trying to grab loose balls. I, I thought that was an impressive, impressive defensive effort, and I keep coming back to it again and again. But a AJ Store struggled a little bit early. He made just one of four to start the game and then got himself back into control. A and Greg Gard talked about this the fact that he got himself back into control after that one of four start. start he <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, AJ Store. Um... <laughs> he shot nine of 12 the rest of the way. Oh, man. 
hitting all three of his threes in the second half to really help put away the Northwestern Wildcats. And it all starts with Stephen Crowell, in my opinion. If you're looking for an MVP of the game, I don't know how it goes to anybody but AJ Store, who, as always, has a highlight reel dunk in in this game in a massive 30 point performance, just barely out dueling Boo Booey, who started the game hot, and then Wisconsin locked in on him late. AJ Store started the game cold and locked in late. performance from AJ store and Wisconsin's going to need look if Wisconsin is going to get to the second weekend or eh, no, I think if Wisconsin is going to win a game in the second weekend, Wisconsin has a chance at getting to the elite eight. <laughs> and I know that sounds crazy right now, but the way this team's playing, they have a real shot at getting to the speed 16. And at that point, you've got to win one game to get to the elite eight, right? In one of those three games, you're going to need an AJ Store performance. Maybe not quite a 30-point performance, but you're going to need something in the 20-plus range from him. And right now, uh, he he is playing phenomenal, phenomenal basketball. And, and that performance right there where he is showcasing his talents, whether that be for the NBA, putting the rest of the conference on notice, or something else. he He is bringing that to impact winning at an incredibly high level for this Wisconsin basketball team. You will notice, I believe the only starter we did not talk about so far was Tyler wall, who again had a real nothing burger of a performance, quite frankly. And we are lucky that it was just a nothing burger and that we're not talking about it any more than that because he exited the game with an injury. He did return, but faced some foul trouble earlier on in the game, uh, had, had two first half fouls and played a total of 24 minutes. Marcus Silver getting extended run in this one with 16 minutes of his own, um, Two points on he. I mean, he made a drive to the basket in transition, got fouled and drained both free throws. So, uh, good enough for for Marcus Silver, who I, who I thought played fine. Um, nothing really more than just fine in in this one. Um, didn't have a positive plus minus. The only batcher on the team to have a negative plus minus. If you are someone who cares about that kind of thing, um, but Tyler Wall has. A zero for one shooting performance from the field, two rebounds, one assist, two turnovers. And the only reason I hesitate to give Tyler Wall the NIP of this game is that I am beginning to think that the way this team is playing right now, they might only be able to have one big going at, at a time, whether that be the four or the five, because over the last few games against Northwestern, Tyler Wall, zero points against Maryland, Tyler Wall, four points against Purdue, Tyler Wall, 17 points. And remember that Stephen Crowell was out for much of that game, ends up fouling out of that game. Stephen Crowell not able to get anything going himself there. Meanwhile, Tyler Wall is seven of nine from two. Uh, and then against Rutgers, where Stephen Crowell played incredibly well, had a possession where he grabbed four offensive rebounds, Tyler Wall, three points on one of six shooting. That difference there, where one of six shooting maybe spells a little bit more of a difference, Tyler Wall, one of four against Maryland. But this is, uh, I don't know if it if it is a trend that these two bigs can't get going at the same time. But if you go back another game before that, and yeah, some of this just has to go with the Stephen Crowell narrative of it all, that... He hasn't been, had not been playing great as of late. You go back another game to the loss against Illinois and, and Tyler Wall had 20 points on uh, nine of 14 shooting and Stephen Crowell had four points on two of four shooting. 
So there is a little bit of an issue here where Wisconsin just can't seem to get both of its starting forwards going at the same time. That does concern me a little bit, but I do also understand why a little from an X's and O's standpoint that the way Stephen Crowell is drawing out other players and, and affecting that spacing might just make it easier for guys on the wing to score and drive to the hoop rather than having Tyler Wall post up and go to work. It's not that I don't think that that can be an effective recipe as well, because if you bring out, you know, somebody to defend Stephen Crowell closer to the perimeter, you would think there's more chance for, for Tyler Wall to be able to succeed. And that is where I think Wisconsin, you know, needs some help, needs to do something a little bit differently against Purdue. Purdue is up next for Wisconsin. Wisconsin plays them Saturday at noon on CBS. That game against Purdue, most recently, I remember going into it and, and saying that you want to get some actions for Tyler Wall on, on the perimeter so that you can draw at Zach Eady and let Stephen Crowell go to work. That's even bigger considering how well Stephen Crowell is playing right now. Um, if you can get some high low action, some high ball screen situation, get Tyler Wall, you know, moving in the pick and roll, anything early to draw Zach Eady out and really make them think about how they want to defend Tyler Wall, how they want to defend Stephen Crowell. Because if either one of these two things happen, you get a game where Zach Eady sticks with Tyler Wall again, and you have a hot Stephen Crowell who, look, he's gotten in foul trouble. He, he has been taken out of these games because of what is happening on the other end of the court, by and large. Not to say that he has not struggled against Purdue on the offensive side. But mostly, he's just taken out of these games. If he doesn't get into foul trouble, he is able to go to work on offense against Mason Gillis, who Stephen Crowell has a full six inches on. That could be big. Or you get Stephen Crowell going really early, and then you say, all right, that's fine. You're going to bring Zach Eady over on me? Cool. I'm going to pull him out to the perimeter then because I know, you know, Zach Eady knows that I can shoot. Bring Zach Eady out to the perimeter. Have Tyler Wall go to work on Mason Gillis down low. Get Tyler Wall going after he has had a couple of unimpressive games. It's that easy, right? Uh, it's that easy. Beating beating Purdue. One, one, one little trick. Um... I don't know how far this Wisconsin team is going to go. If they beat Purdue, though, I, I I will be fully in. Fully in. At least into it for a second weekend run. Like, March is just so much more fun. When, when the Badgers are in it, when the Badgers are contending to, to get to the second weekend. Because that that is the high watermark for this team. And I would, I would love, I would love to see it tomorrow. It's a huge day, huge day. Big 10 tournament semifinals, regional finals in the NCAA women's hockey tournament. 24 hours after that game ends, we'll have a bracket. It is March. It is madness. We'll break it down here on the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Thank you for listening on your podcast platform of choice. I've been your host, Kedrick Stumbers. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbers. While you are here, leave a nice review. Five stars, kind comments. Really does help people find the show. Let's us bring on more Badger fans, Packers fans, teams who or folks who cover the teams. Let's us make some excellent content for you. Uh, I have an interview up in the media scrum with Braylon Allen from Pro Day that is up on this YouTube channel right now. Go ahead, give that a watch. He has some interesting insight on why he decided to not run at the Combine or at his Pro Day. 
Until we talk to you again tomorrow on Wisconsin.